Hey guys, David here and welcome to Datolab Tech. So in my last video about my custom desk PC, I asked you guys if you wanted a tutorial on how to set up Speedfan. And you answered with a big yes. So here it is. Now many of you maybe have tried Speedfan before, but didn't have much success and uninstalled it again. The first time I wanted to use it, it was the same. I installed it, it didn't work, so I uninstalled it again. But with this new system, I then researched a bit more and learned how to set it up properly. So today I'm gonna show you how you can do this as well, and it isn't even that hard. So let's hop over right to the PC. So here we are at the PC on the Speedfan website, where you can download it. I will have this linked down in the description and it, it's important that you download it from this page and not some third party where you might get malware or similar things. Just click here on Speedfan 4.52 and download it. Then you just install it. I already have it installed so I don't need to do that. After you open it up, there will be some text here scrolling by when it scans your system for all the hardware you have. Just wait till it is finished. Then you are here in the interface of Speedfan. Down here you have a couple options to control your fans. But when you start to assist the software for the first time, these won't do anything. Also here you can see all your temperatures and the RPMs of your fans and down here the voltages. But when we want to control your our fans we first need to configure. So we click here on configure and go to advanced up here. Here we need to choose the chip which controls our fans. In my case it's this one but you can just click through till you find what we look for. Here you have the modes of the, all the fan headers that are on the motherboard. Now here it will say something like hardware controlled or something um, like that with you or a smart fan or whatever it is on your motherboard. But you need to change it to manual or software controlled, whatever is available for you. This allows the software to control the fans instead of the motherboard. Then you also need to click this little tick here to remember these settings when the system starts again. Then when you have this done this for all the fans that you want to control, click OK and then you should be able to control these with the controls right here. For example, when I adjust the CPU fan, which in my case is the pump, you will hear that it gets louder. I can also type in exact values if you want to, for example 88% and then my fans will speed up to 88%. Now this is all fine and dandy but we don't really want to mess around with this ourselves but we want fan curves and other fancy stuff like that. And to do that we go on to configure again. In here we have a tab called fan control and in the fan control we can add different fan controllers. Don't mind the ones I already have there, these are only there because I already set it up for my system. But we just click here on add, then this little window pops up and we can for example say um, in the intake fans then we have here a fan controller called intake fans. And here, down here, we can adjust things for this fan controller. First of all, we want to make this take here to control speed. And then we select which fan we want to control. For example, we want to control our auxiliary fan, which maybe is your front intake. Then we choose this auxiliary fan and down here we have to add the temperatures we want to control it with. Just click on add and here you have a list of all the temperature probes that are in your system. You will see that not only your CPU has 
the temperature probe in every core, but also your hard drives and SSDs have one, and on your motherboard there are also quite a few. Also your GPU is listed up here. Now let's just to begin with make it CPU dependent. And you could choose the CPU package here, but Speedfan doesn't recognize it correctly on my system, so I'm just gonna take Core 0 here. And then click on OK. Now we have here Core 0 under Temperatures. And we click on it, we have this dialog where we can adjust the fan curve. You can see there are many points, and so you can really finally adjust your fan curve. For example, let's say at 30 to 35 degrees we want it to be almost zero and then we want to gradually increase it till it is at 100% at 60 degrees. But if we, we now don't want uh, 60 degrees to be 100%, we can change it down here to maybe 70 degrees if you want to go that high. You can also change the minimum down here. And this then should give you a really nice fan curve where you can adjust your different fans. But the intakes fans, which I'm trying to set the fan curve here, they also should spin up if only the GPU gets hot. So we are going to add a second temperature. And this time we take the GPU. And in here we can once again make a different fan curve, which is dependent on the GPU temperature. Maybe this fan curve should be like that. Whatever, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. And then up here in the method, we choose how these fans react to it. Sum of speeds means that it takes the temperature of each component and the speed at which the fan should run at this and then adds the two together. But most of the time we want to take max of speeds, which takes the speed whichever one is higher, either the CPU or GPU. And then when we have here this fan controller for the intake fans set up, we can click here down on OK. And then if we want this fan controller to take effect, we need to click here on automatic fans speed. This then will adjust your fans dependent on your temperature. I'm just gonna quickly show this as an example with the temperatures that I have set up. I'm just gonna start it off, have a benchmark and you can will be able to see the GPU temperatures rise here and then also the system fan which is my radiator fan and CPU fan increase. Now, you were able to see here that it increased a little bit, but only very slightly. And that's because I have a very conservative fan curve, as my system is water-cooled and I have a lot more radiator capacity than I would need, so I don't need much fan speed. Also, you need to differentiate if your fans are controlled over PWM or DC. If you are controlling with PWM, you can go to 0% no problem, as this will only turn very slowly then, but it will be totally okay. But with DC fan control, this, that's the 3 pin fans, 0% the fans won't turn at all and they will only start at around 30%. Now I'm running uh, PWM control, so my fans go till 0%, but they are still spinning at 0%. So that's the basics of SpeedFan. Now there are many more features in SpeedFan which I didn't show you yet, but I guess for this video that's enough. So I hope with this information you are now able to set up SpeedFan for yourself as well and you can enjoy a better control system. If you like this video please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked below 
and I also have a new website that you can check out for more behind the scenes. Thanks for watching and until next time.